thanks for joining us for this episode. And I wanted to remind you that you actually can watch video versions of each episode by subscribing to the Church Advance YouTube channel. All you got to do is head over to youtube.com slash at church advance or see the link in the show notes and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel there. Of course, you can follow us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you may be listening to podcasts. But wanted to give a special plug for the video version. Well, I'm really excited about getting to today's episode as we continue to advance a reformation, a fellowship, partnership, and gospel hope amongst Bible-believing pastors and churches. This is Church Advance with Brian Sams. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Church Advance Podcast. Luke, welcome back, man. Here we are again. Yeah, here we are starting another uh, series of conversations. Uh, you know, this is, it's like I said uh, in our last recording session, you know, this is, this has just become a highlight of kind of my month when we, we get together, we do these recordings. Um, we just introduced uh, the preaching uh, series uh, that you're going to be doing. And, and I, like I said, I just kind of enjoy uh, sitting here and kind of, kind of learning. And I'm, I'm looking forward to learning from this because the content you've got to cover today, uh, the, the title here is Midlife Musings. So, <laughs> you're you're calling yourself midlife you know you're, oh you're, my you're word. accepting it embracing it you know i'm not in a crisis i'm not in a crisis right now you know luke it sometimes you just have to you just have to step back and wake up to what really is in front of you the mm. very fact of the matter is i am in the what they would call the dead center of midlife um mm. although really i'm past midlife really yeah i mean so so you double my age and i'm what you're, no. you're 90, right? I'm 90. That's, that's yeah. right. That's I mean, right. I, if anybody can make it to 90, you got it. I hope so, man. I'm in the gym every day and trying and uh, got my fitness coach helping me. And uh, and actually, I'm doing really well right now with my health Good. and fitness. And uh, But but really, you know, what made me think, Luke, uh, this, this summer, every summer for me, is the, is the that's when all the anniversaries are. It's my birthday. It's my wedding anniversary. It's my church anniversary. In fact, four out of five of my children, their birthdays are all bunched together. So June and July for us, is just this every year it happens. It's the cycle of reflection, which I think is healthy for all of us to do. Of course, when you hear 45, I know a lot of people think that's young, but then most of the people I deal with now, I'm not, I'm not the younger one and I still have good friends and people I minister with that are that are older than me. But the truth of the matter is, most guys I preach for, most guys I counsel, most guys I help, most guys I consult with, most guys that I coach, they're younger than me, and that's why I'm in those positions. Yeah. Well, you just forty five. I don't know what it was. Forty didn't bother me. Forty five doesn't really bother me, but it just made me think, and I thought, man, if I you say midlife and I'm, if I, that means that I'd have to live to 90, if not, uh, let's say I live that life expectancy currently, the life expectancy of men is 73. Hmm. So I've got 20, it was a 28 years left, God willing. Um, of course I could die tomorrow. I could get cancer and die next year. I'm, I'm not presum presuming anything. I'm just saying it doesn't make me feel like I've got a lot of time left and it makes me stop and go, okay, where am I at? I think it's a good thing to take some assessments. I think it's a good thing to set back. This is when, as you know, Luke, they call the midlife crisis this is when people start thinking about changing jobs, changing wives, changing uh, locations. You just start, you know, thinking maybe you made some mistakes along the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, of course I have. Um, and so is everybody else, but I'm thankful, honestly, man, I'm thankful that I can look at this time of my life with some joy and some excitement about the future. And so what I did just during that season is I just wrote down some things relating to myself, my family, uh, and my church and halfway kind of through life, so to speak, what? 
what are some things that I have noticed or observed or mused about? So those are kind of the three uh, areas, Luke, and let's just, man, I'll just pick them off one at a time here. Talk about maybe life first. What are some things I've learned? Yeah. Yeah. You've got, uh, I've got, just make sure we're looking at the same notes. I've got 11 points here that you've written out and we'll, uh, we'll yep. kind of go through yep. that here. That's it. Um, yeah. So let's, let's look at the, the first one here. Um, it's just, I love this, the, the, the statement here. I am blessed. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, R.C. Sproul said these words, when I think I have been unfairly treated, I remember that I am unfairly loved. Mm. That's the story, man. At the end of the day, it's all of our story, Luke. We're all mm. unfairly loved. Look, man, nobody could take an honest look at their lives uh, and say God hasn't been faithful and good. But I feel like just in my case, man, honestly, I, I'm going to I'm going to quote a uh luke combs song right now so i'm gonna get uh man we are i'm ready for that dislike button the hate the hater comments I, no you know what N nothing will be uh as bad as uh, you know the king james stuff so oh, you're that's, safe. A, that's exactly right so so uh yeah as long as you're king james only you can listen to luke combs if you're not if you're not king james only it's just because you're a compromiser now you like luke combs <laughs> I'm not going to say whether I like him or not. I can either can I can either confirm or deny this, but I do. <laughs> so, so go ahead, haters. Go ahead. Anyways, I can't. I'm, I'm ready for the mail on that one. He's got a new song called Five Leaf Clover," and it's just it, it bas basically it's about looking at your life and mm. what. Man, I, I should have only had three. How did a guy like me who should have only had three end up with a five leaf clover? Yeah. I'm beyond beyond. This is beyond luck. Yeah. This is God. This is in my case, I'd say. I can't say he would say it like this, but actually he probably would. <laughs> oh country boy. Yeah. Yeah. He I would say, Wow. I would, man. I'm I'm not I'm not hyperbolizing. I'm not I'm not uh speaking just to try and impress my audience. I do what I love and call it work. That's another country song, by the way. Yeah. Um, I, I have literally every day in and out all day long. I just do what I love. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I, I study the Bible. I preach the Bible. Today's great. We record on Wednesdays. Usually <laughs> I'm recording my favorite podcast for a, for my favorite audience. I've been in the book of Revelation this morning. I start preaching it on Sunday. Mm. I prepared for a few minutes for traveling up to Newington, Connecticut this weekend and doing a staff orientation for my friend, Carrie Schmidt. I'm doing a wedding for a couple that's been living together in our church on Sunday. Uh, and they're, they they just, God spoke to their hearts and they needed to get married. So I'm doing their wedding. I'm getting ready to do a, a Bible study tonight with um, our college students at our church. I mean, dude, I am literally... Like I just live the dream, man. Yeah, I mean, in, yeah. in every way. I, I mean, what can I say, man? I'm not looking right now and going, "Wow, how have I missed this for the last?" I'm going, "What a blessing, man! What a blessing mm. that I ended up preaching, teaching, training, loving people, serving others, uh, ministering to a specific audience of pastors." And, and I mean, just last week, Luke, I had two struggling pastors here on the campus that we've we're about to launch a full scale ministry to hurting pastors. I mean, it just wow. here we go, man. Like, let's just go. And that's that's just that's just professionally, which kind of leads me to the, you know, the second part. But I mean, dude, I'm blessed, man. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, as as uh, again, I kind of take this in because you know, I you you're you're 45, I'm 32. And so you are a decade plus ahead of me. Uh, and you know, so I, I, I genuinely, you know, I get to hear, I get to hear all this stuff first, you know, and I, as, as, as your kind of first audience member and, um, I, I just, I really glean and learn from this. And so my question though, just to follow up with this is, it's, uh, I guess my musing about your musing is, you know, what, to what, what's the balance between, Hey, I really do truly have a blessed life. And, but I, at the same time, I have a mindset of gratitude. Because as you as you talk that way, it's like you 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 definitely have this. Just obviously, it seems like your life is great. Um, but how much of that flows from? Because some people can have the a lot of what you're talking about, living the dream, doing the job they love, all these things. 
but yet somehow they're still miserable. Um, so I wonder, yeah. I wonder what the what that balance is of hey, things really are good because yeah, hey, if you want to sit there and talk about how great your life is, but your your life sucks, you know, then then you're kind of uh, you're you're what we call an Instagram influencer. You know, you're no, lying. that's right. That's uh, right. So I, I do wonder what's what's the balance there if there's really a direct answer to that question. Well, I mean. I mean, you know, just plainly, first and foremost, I'm a Christian man. Um, mm. So I praise God from whom all blessings flow. Like, I want to be conscious to acknowledge that every good and perfect gifts from above. I mean, so I'd be foolish to do it. Not, not to mention, number two, it's intentional. I mean, Luke, I'd, be, I'd also be lying to not sit here and say that I've had some challenges, mm. both in recent history and then on more practical levels, as early as today. I mean, as early as before I got on the the, the microphone here with you today, I, I had to put out a little fire. Not a church fire. Uh, it was a more organizational fire. Hey, look, man, it's life. Life. Last night, I slept on the couch, not because I was in trouble with my wife. <laughs> um, I was actually trying to help my wife. She's had trouble sleeping for a couple of reasons with sickness. And one of our kids has been waking up a lot. So I let her sleep, turn on the fans, turn on her sound machine, went out to the couch. So I would be the first one to catch a waking baby Yeah, because I love my wife. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I, I didn't sleep much last night. So, I mean, I'm kind of tired, but you know what, what your, your, your focus determines your future, man. You can, yeah. you can do whatever you can choose to focus on whatever you want to focus on. That's why somebody in Haiti can have such joy in the Lord when they have relatively nothing and somebody in America can be a little stinking rotten brat and have everything. And uh, I think it was old Oliver Green said, even, even a pig knows when to lift up his snout from the slop and thank God. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just that I think it's the, it's a perspective. Think about this, Luke, I'm preaching on revelation one this Sunday and think about this as verse 10 I or at verse nine, I John, your brother and companion companion in tribulation, was in the isle called Patmos. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Hmm. Think about the perspective. Yeah. Number number one, why am I here? Well, for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> what am I what am I going to do here? I'm going to stay in the spirit and on God's day, I'm going to worship him. But that's what we're looking for, man. That, that just, it's all about perspective. So it's, it's the Christian perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it makes a big difference. You know, <laughs> um, whenever you realize that, uh, you know, uh, Jesus promises us life and life abundantly. Um, and you just grasp that and you hold to that. I mean, it does, it changes things. And I mean, not to, not to chase uh, too much of a rabbit here and get off, off topic, but you know, it's just recent years where I've really, really comprehended what that means. You know, uh, we don't just punch a ticket to heaven. You know, we, we, we have this abundant life right now, uh, in, in yep. this present physical life that we live, that we can claim. And, and it, it is awesome. So <laughs> let's move on though to, to number two, you say I am blessed and, and yeah, number two, because, and you alluded to this earlier, even though, you know, you had to sleep on the couch last night, uh, you know, uh, number two, uh, is, uh, that you have a great family. Yeah. I've been married to Angie now for 21 years. What a blessing. I mean, you know, it, it just gets better. You get, you know, each other better. You love each other more. And I got five kids, man. A lot of people can't say that. Uh, it's hmm. crazy, man. It's crazy. I have a three-year-old. Um, he's, he's at the final stages of potty training. Uh, and I've got a 16 year old getting ready to drive. So, I mean, it, you know, we're, we're in this, but you know what, uh, this summer during this season, we went to universal studios for six days together. Just us. It was just, it was just fun, man. My kids are yeah. fun. My 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 boy is going into middle school. He's a lot of fun. He won his first fishing tournament the other day and uh, won a trip to Costa Rica. Believe it or not. Oh wow! Wow, <laughs> it's serious. Nice. It's just it's just fun, man. Um, last night, sitting on the couch, working with my teenage daughter on her driving stuff, getting ready to take her driver's test. Dude, man, who? What could be better? You know, God yeah. gave us four kids by adoption, one by uh, conception, and. Uh, what a, what a fun journey. And, and, and I'm going to combine number three and two, Luke, cause it's really, I just kind of an add on. Yeah. Yeah. My, my wife gave this to me some time ago and that's this, the most important work you will ever do is within the walls of your own home. Wow. And <clears throat> I think, um, I had to learn that it's never been easy for me. In fact, uh, Angie and I were just talking yesterday and next year in 2024, 
I'm only going to take speaking engagements that require me to speak in one day. Wow. I just, man, um, dude, I just got, I got a lot going on, man. I got, I got, mm-hmm. I can stay so busy here. I don't, I don't preach. I don't preach for money. I'm not a hireling. So at some point you got to decide what's best for your family. Yeah. And I got a lot going on. So, so if I can get there one day and be back the next morning, uh, I might consider it. But, um, other than that, I just, I got to know that my kids are my most important ministry. My wife is more important than anything. And, and, and so fortunately I'm, I have that, that blessing of having a great family. So, yeah. Yeah. Just for fun. You, you started to allude to it. What are, what is the spread of your kids? You talked about okay. the oldest, the youngest, but let's, let's, let's break down the ages here. Just so everybody has a full comprehension of what you're dealing with here. Maybe we'll throw a picture up on the post or something. Oh, so yeah, 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 see yeah, it. since that. I'm not, since I'm not on social media, yeah. Uh, one, my oldest daughter, Adriana is about to turn 16. My oldest son, Brent just turned 11. He's in middle school. Now my next son down Blake is six. My next daughter, Ashley, is uh, five. And then my youngest child is a boy, Braxton. He is uh, three. So 16, 11. Oh, somebody say, man. Come on. 16, 11, six, five, and three. That's the breakdown. Nice, nice. Yeah, I just thought, you know, oh, let's let's let everybody know, like I said, what what you're actually working with here, you know, and uh, I don't I don't think we have uh, time to go into it in this particular episode. But I think someday, uh, I know off mic, you've told me the story of your the adoption of your kids, and it is pretty uh, incredible. And so I think I think that's something we need to pin. Let's and maybe do let's do adoption stories next recording yeah, time. Yeah, that'd be yeah, great. Let's, let's make sure we do that. Well, let, let's move uh, into the next one here. Um, and which is uh, that you have learned the joy of not stressing over situations that I can't control. Come on. We all need this one. Wow. Wow. I mean, uh, guys, this is such a fundamental thing about life. It's called contentment. Uh, There's an admonition in scripture not to worry. And oftentimes, as you know, we worry about things that sometimes never matriculate. And quite frankly, there's nothing you can do about it. Let me let me let me give you the case in point as a pastor. There is rarely anything I can do to stop somebody from leaving our church. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, this year, I can say, praise God, at least right now, we're in the end of August. We've had the lowest attrition of any year in the history of our church, meaning mm-hmm. less people have moved, less people have died, or less people have left. Of yeah. course, in the first, the first six years of River City was a bloodbath, <laughs> um, so people were leaving a lot. But this year, it's like stable and strong and healthy But you know what? If somebody gets carnal or upset or mad and they decide to leave, I nine times out of ten, there's nothing I can do about it. Maybe ten, maybe nine point nine times out of ten, if they never called me or they never or or, or something like this, I can't control when somebody makes personal decisions that are going to harm their spiritual life. Mm. Um, Sometimes they didn't even ask me, or they went directly against something that I encouraged them not to do. And I can't worry about it, man. I can't, I can't do everything. I can't solve every problem. I can't meet every need. I can't be everywhere. I just, I'm limited, man. I have a finite reason. So what do I do? I just rest in the Lord and do my job. Yeah. Yeah. And, and man, that brings joy to pastoral work. Yeah. Uh, and what you're saying, it's so much easier said than done to just, uh, you know, not not worry, not have that anxiety. You know, I heard, I've heard the quote many times, something I try to remind myself of is you don't always have the power to control, but you do always have the power to surrender and surrendering, uh, you know, what you, and truly acknowledging what you don't have control of. Uh, That is humbling, but it's powerful. Yeah. Um, and, uh, in fact, I remember a few months ago, I, I came to you with some personal counsel and you just looked right at me and said, uh, I think you're just dealing with anxiety. Like take your <laughs> thought. that's what you told me. And I was like, you're right. This is over. You know, this, this, uh, this session is over, you know? Um, and so that is, uh, it's a lot, it, again, easier said than done, but, you know, grasping that, you know, um, and, and that is, that does bring a certain joy there. Uh, well, um, let's move on to the next one. Uh, speaking of what you can control, uh, you said that uh, you have learned to be in control of your schedule uh, and choose where to make your primary investment of time. Yeah, I mean, so and it's the it's the other side of the coin, Luke. Mm-hmm. 
what can I not control? Well, I can't control the weather. Why well, get mad? Well, you get mad at God. I can't control. Yeah. I can't control. Now, w- let's talk about health for a minute. I can control whether I choose to put my body in a situation where I'm going to be a diabetic or I'm going to have heart disease. That's my choice. Now, if God gives me cancer <clears throat> and it's out of my control, he's God, man. He can do whatever he wants. I'm not God, so I can't play God. However, I do have some control. I do have some choice. I have some say so. And what I have found in my life is that the number one way that I can control my life is through my schedule. And and I get to choose how I spend my time. Time is God's gift to me. What I do with it is my gift back to God. The simple way to do time management is really it's really life management, but the simplest way to do it is this. Why am I here? And what actions are performed to execute that purpose? Mm. Why am I here? And what actions are executed to perform that purpose? Okay, why am I here? I've got, I've got, really, Luke, I've got three major responsibilities in my life. I'm a, my family, my church, and my walk with God. Or let me broaden it. Let me say my ministry because my ministry yeah. is also other things, but my family, God, and my church. So my my calendar must reflect actions that are consistent with my family, with God, and with my church. So what do I do? I go in and I make sure those things are scheduled. Then I make sure I follow my schedule. And if somebody calls me wanting to do something that's out of my schedule, I've got to ask this question, is that out of my purpose? <clears throat> is, is this make sense for me to do this? Um, there have been times where uh, I have taken things that, I, that were not my responsibility to take. I shouldn't have done it. And I, I'm yeah. learning that. I've just learned, man. Okay, I've got to study the Bible. Nobody can take that for me. Uh, well, I, I know some people that let other people do that for them, but that's okay. That's a whole other story. I <laughs> – I, 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 I don't, I don't feel, con- I don't feel like my conscience will let me. I do not steal sermons from other people. I do not, I, I, I study my own stuff, P- prepare my own sermons, <clears throat> preach my own sermons. That I think I'm responsible for that. I'm responsible for my staff. I'm responsible for discipleship. I'm responsible for training pastors in our church. Those things have to be reflected in my calendar. I don't <laughs> always go to staff meetings. Or I show up for a staff meeting for five minutes and say, who's got a question for me? Because it's predominantly operational. <clears throat> so uh, I could go on about that, Luke, but I think the point is, uh, and let me give you another another uh, socket here that this applies to. Every opportunity is not an obligation, and every person who thinks they need my time isn't necessarily going to get it. Mm. Yeah, just because you think you need my time doesn't mean that you're going to get my time. Yeah. And so I make that choice. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it could be something like even a speaking engagement, never, no, not every opportunity is an obligation. And sometimes I've just got to look at it. In fact, I'm making a choice next year that it's going to be tough for me to make. It's a, uh, it has to do with how long I'll be gone and it has to do with where it is. And there's certain things that, um, I just can't do anymore and, yeah. and make all the things work together. So, but I'm in control of that. Mm-hmm. And I think that matters a ton. Yeah. Well, it, it is interesting, you know, kind of how these two points, if you will, tie together about on the one hand, you are releasing control of what you can't control. On the other hand, you're taking extreme ownership of what you can control. Because um, what and this is uh, speaking for a friend who may or may not be myself uh, in terms of speaking as a control freak, uh, something that I, you know, I guess I guess I've just in my early, earlier adult years, if you will, early 20s, I, I was very controlling about things that had to do with other people and other things out of my control. And I'd let that really get to me. But you know what I noticed about myself? I didn't care a thing, seemingly, about controlling what I could, which is myself. Wow. I didn't have a schedule. 
I didn't have a I didn't have a schedule that I made. I mean, I went to a job and and did my job and did my work and whatever. But other people were controlling my schedule. I didn't have any boundaries. I didn't take care of myself even physically. I ate, drank whatever I wanted. Uh, didn't care about you know things like exercise and all of that. And it was it was interesting. It's like and I, I that's kind of a pattern you see in these control freak personalities is they want to control everyone else except for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got to flip that. You've got to, You've got to flip that on its head and you've got to take extreme ownership of yourself. And, and I like how you're pointing out here, one of the best ways to do that, if not the best way is in your actual schedule. Um, and so I think that's just really powerful and helpful. Well, uh, let's move on to the next one here. Um, and I actually think this will be a good place to pick up uh, our next episode. So, but I'll go ahead and, and tease it uh, because it has to do with money. Uh, it says, I have learned to enjoy life now while seeing that things are financially in order for my family. We're going to pick up that in the next episode. Um, but yeah, Brian, I'm really enjoying this conversation and continuing it in the next one. Hey, thanks so much for joining us for this episode. And until next time, I want to remind you that you can subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can actually watch video versions of each episode. The video version is also available on Spotify, so make sure to follow us there. You can also catch the audio on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and wherever you may listen to podcasts. If you want to connect with Brian, then simply head over to his website, briansams.com, where you can reach out, ask a question, and get connected there. The podcast is hosted by Brian Sams. It's co-hosted and produced by myself, Luke Clayton, and the team at Must Increase. Com. Thanks so much again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode as we continue to advance a reformation, a fellowship, partnership, and gospel hope amongst Bible-believing pastors and churches right here on Church Advance with Brian Sanders. Mm -hmm.